several persons, perhaps as many as 10, are believed to have been killed last night in Liberia's capital, Monrovia, when an unidentified vehicle plowed into supporters of the main opposition unity party. This, as they were celebrating the victory of former Vice President Joseph Wakai in the November 14 presidential runoff election. Unity Party Chairperson Luther Tape tells me that this was an act of terrorism. Well, I just received a very disturbing call a few minutes ago from some of our party top officials that while our partisans were in a celebratory mood after the pronouncement that our Stenabara won the presidential elections, a vehicle driven by an unknown person uh, ran into the crowd. And what I'm hearing that there's a lot of casualty about 12 men and four women at a very critical condition. This is quite unfortunate that on the day of celebrating the presidential victory of the president-led Chusei Nyimaboikai, an act of terrorism has been committed against the United Party. That is so unfortunate. I know it's late, it's late night now in Monrovia. Do you have any information in terms of uh, where the vehicle was coming from? And the, did the incident take place at your party headquarters in the street or at the headquarters itself? I'm, I know it's too late there, but what do you know? Yes, yeah, so from the time that the election commissions uh, make the pronouncement to the country and the world, our partisans gathered at the party headquarters on Broad Street and part of the crowd spill onto the main street, uh, just on the descending hill of our party headquarters where our people have been celebrating. And the vehicle came from the from the left side and just ran into the people. The driver uh, intentionally off his light and just drove among the people, uh, causing a lot of casualty tonight. And it's so sad that this time of celebration for the United Partisans across the world, we are now in a very disturbing mindset at this point, knowing that our partisans, some of them, I'm hearing some people have died. I cannot confirm that because I'm so far away, I cannot go. And then all the officials are not able to reach there. And so right now, um, I've spoken with one top police officer who also confirmed that some of our people have been rushed to JFK, the medical center, and other clinics around to give medical treatment to the wounded uh, uh, partisan. Has the president-elect, uh, former vice president, Mr. Boakai, has he been informed? Yes, as the party chairman, I have tried to reach out to him. He had a very long day meeting people, uh, international people, corporate organizations. And so I tried to reach out to him, but it was unsuccessful getting to him. So I've been trying to uh, get all of the uh, information to brief him very, very early in the morning. Before I let you go, Mr. Tapper, you are saying that uh, there are casualties, that some people might have died. I believe so, uh, Mr. Boti, that from what I'm hearing, even talking with the uh, top police officer, who just briefed me that there are people who are on very critical condition, even though he cannot confirm death at this point. But our witnesses on the scene have said to me, Chairman, there are a lot of people who have died, and so tomorrow we're going to confirm that. But this is a, this seems to me as a intentional ad, a calculated effort to truncate the joyful moment of uh, United Partisans. And after a very... Uh, heated uh, uh, elections, and to see this salary ad against our partisan is despicable. It's so much uh, on Liberian, and we hope that the perpetrators will be brought to justice. Mr. Topper, thank you so much again. We're very sorry. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. That was Luther Tarpe, the chairperson of Liberia's main opposition unity party. He was speaking with us from the capital, Monrovia. In the Democratic Republic of Congo, the opposition together for the republic says the endorsement of the group's leader, Moise Katumbe, by a former prime minister, will boost his presidential prospects in next month's general election. This after former prime minister, Augustine Matata Ponyo, endorsed ahead of the polls, Katumbe, a prominent businessman and a former governor of the Katanga region. For more about the endorsement and its electoral impact, viewers Peter Clotted Rich, Olivier 
Kamitatu, the spokesperson for presidential candidate Moi Katumbe. We were very, very honored and very pleased to see that Prime Minister Mata Patonio recognized the work done in South Africa by the delegates of the main opposition parties. And that's the reason why I think he decided to withdraw his candidacy and to uh, support uh, Moïse Katumbi, the man who has the great, I think, uh, opportunities or uh, capacities to be the next president of the Republic on the RP. Okay. Do you think the endorsement will have any significant impact about the electoral prospect of Mr. Moïse Katumbi? Yes, the impact is obvious. Uh, if you, the voters in Congo are divided between the great main uh, uh, ethnic and linguistic group in in the Swahili in the eastern part of Congo, the the people are are, are speaking in Swahili, the Swahili language. Matataponyo is native from the Kivus, from Maniema in the Kivu. Population uh, speaks in uh, Swahili represents 45 percent of the voters so if we can forge a coalition between all these great leaders coming from eastern part of congo and if we can attract also uh, uh, some people coming from the western part of congo it's really great impact on the next election so that's the reason why it was very important uh, uh the secondly matata ponyo was prime minister during five years of his mandate uh, in uh, uh the top of the government. So he's not only well known in this part of Congo, but he has also a great experience of the governance and great competence in terms of leadership. Do you realistically think, with all the advantages of being the incumbent president that Felix Tshisekedi enjoys, Moes Katumbi can defeat him, especially without the support of uh, Mr. Martin Fayulu, who says he won the last election? Yes. Martin Fayulu won the last election because he got the support of Moïse Katumbi. Moïse Katumbi was in exile at this period, and Moïse Katumbi uh, asked his people from the great Katanga, the great province of Katanga, to support it to vote Martin Fayulu. That's the reason Martin Fayulu got uh, more than 60%. He, he, he got during this, uh, elect- the last election. Katumbi and also the support of Bemba from Equator. It was not only the popularity of Martin Fayulu. That's why uh, I can say today that uh, 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 Moïse Katumbi is very, very popular. Uh, all the meetings illustrate his popularity. Thousands and thousands of people are coming just to see uh, Moïse Katumbi and to give him his, uh, their support. So, uh, Obviously, uh, Katumbi, with the support of Matata and the other leaders of, of the opposition, has a large majority uh, in the population. Political parties in Tanzania are not amused with the proposed changes to electoral laws, saying they give the president more say in constitution of electoral commission. The proposals are contained in three bills tabled in parliament on November 10th following pressure from opposition seeking an independent electoral system to be in place ahead of the 2024 local government elections and the presidential parliamentary polls a year later. Parliamentary debate on the bills has been postponed until the next sitting in February 2024 pending by a special house committee that will also involve public participation. With a civil polls scheduled to be held in October of the same year, uh, this will provide just eight months for the new legislation to be passed and become operational. The bills that were presented in the house for the first reading are the National Ele- Electoral Commission Bill political parties affairs laws amended bill and the presidential parliamentary and local government elections bill all dated 2023 the past week several critics have asserted that the neck bill has contradictions by stating that the commission will be an independent autonomous organ organ whose decisions will not be interfered with while at the same time including clauses that indicate the president will have the final say in who to admit as members. 
the bill introduces new procedures of people to apply for advertised vacancies in NEC and undergo the GORAS interviews by a special recruitment committee instead of the commissioners being appointed directly by the president. However, it also requires the committee to forward at least nine chosen names for the president to decide on the maximum five commissioners while filing the positions of NEC chairperson and vice chairperson remains. The sole the election of the head of state as expressly stipulated in Tanzania's constitution. The committee will also be mandated to interview applicants for the key post of director of elections 